Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. Hope that you're doing great wherever you are in the world today. I want to welcome uh, all of you to our get together here. We talk about things that are of interest to women over 60 and I want to welcome the new women that have joined us. We have so many new people joining us from all around the world and I just love having you here. So thank you again for, for being here. Now I'm having my morning cup of tea today. I'm having a very beautiful English breakfast. I decided to go with uh, loose tea rather than tea bags today. It's a new strategy of mine, so hopefully uh, it's going to be better for the environment. But uh, a cup of tea is always a nice start to the day. Now, I want to talk to you today about a topic that a lot of people have asked about. And of course, it's been a part of my life for 50 years. And that is meditation and mindfulness. Uh, we have so many stresses going on in our lives these days that we, you know, we really do need some practical techniques for, uh, for coping with them for uh, being at peace with them, for moving forward. And uh, there's an article by one of our bloggers, Joseph Parent, who wrote about practicing mindfulness from a little bit different perspective. And I love his approach. Uh, it's very, very uh, practical and powerful. And that is um, how, to, how to talk to mindfulness about mindfulness in a way that children think about it. And he's written a book uh, based on mindfulness and the lessons of Winnie the Pooh. I know it sounds a bit strange, but it's really, I've actually looked at it and it's a very, very uh, fascinating approach because of course, Winnie the Pooh is all about kindness and about curiosity and about living life, um, you know, with an open heart. So I really love this article. But anyway, mindfulness, what is it? Well, it's a word that has been come, kind of popular recently uh, to talk about what happens when you meditate or when you take a reflective approach to life, when you uh, have an awareness of your external reality that is in line with your emotions and your thoughts and being present in that moment. And as I think as we get older, it's even more important to have this kind of uh, toolbox of uh, things we can do in stressful situations to, to relax and focus on what's really important in life. I mean, that's kind of it for me. So you practice mindfulness that uh, with an intention to be in the here and now, to be present. And the whole point of it is to sit quietly using your breath or a mantra or whatever you use to focus your attention. And simply, in my case, focusing on the breath, going in and out. And then noticing as thoughts come up that they are thoughts and move forward with breathing in and out. And that's honestly all there is to it. But the main important thing is to bring the attention back to the breath. Now, what are some of the objectives of practicing mindfulness? Well, I think there's so many words that you could describe to, to sort of uh, define the aim of mindfulness. But one thing that I think is a thread that goes all the way through it is curiosity. And curiosity is just that willingness to open yourself to the present and see it through a different lens and to be right there present with it. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I have some rituals in the morning that I love. And one of them is to just reflect on a concept or, or some word that is important to me. Curiosity is important to me today. And I wanted to share something with you too that I do every morning, which is to look at an inspirational card that gives me something to sort of focus on and stay in the here and now. Now we have put together a deck of cards for kind of inspirational thinking. It's called Aging Beautifully. And this is a 60 and Me creation that we put together really to sort of help like focus your attention on, to, on topics that are gonna help us get the most out of life in our 60s. It's really as simple as that. So I chose the card this morning on curiosity. And each card has a beautiful picture that sort of reminds you of the, the concept that we're trying to talk about. And this is what it says, and it aligns so perfectly with what Joseph had written about. I thought, well, I'll read this to you. On the back of the card, um, on the back of every card, is a little inspirational paragraph. And it's um, you know, just something to get you going in the day that gets your mind focused. So this one says, children are naturally curious. As we get a little older, our curiosity may diminish, our dreams are replaced by rules, and our desire to explore becomes a need to survive. But it doesn't have to be that way. Rediscover your inner child and reignite your curiosity. Wonder, explore, and marvel. The world is waiting. 
I love that. And it really helps to you know, express this whole concept of mindfulness. And I hope that you found that was that was a kind of a inspirational thought for you. But anyway, Joseph goes on to say that, you know, when you um, think like a child, when you apply this, uh, apply this kind of curiosity, wonder and exploration in your life, you start to, you know, go deeper, closer, touching your emotions and helping to put them in their place to accept the challenges and the um, ups and downs of life. So that curiosity for me honestly keeps me going. I go out into the world and I'm just, I am just curious about what's going to happen next and what uh, I might explore and discover. He talks about um, in this article, you can follow the link and read it in full, but he talks about uh, Shinrin Yoku, which is another technique that kids know all about. And uh, they don't even know they do, but they do. And that is exploring nature. And they love rustling water and, you know, or sorry, rustling leaves and running water. And they just are curious about how things work. My little grandson, Max, will just stand there for, for not hours, but for a long time, just looking at a leaf or a little berry. And just, you can see his little mind just going over and over it. Like, what is this? And how does this work? And what does it mean? So that's this pr practice of um, uh, Shinrin Yoku, which uh, Joseph explains is called forest bathing. And of course, you don't take off your clothes. You just go into the woods or the park or whatever, <laughs> and you just sort of um, absorb nature. You feel it, you bathe in it. And he talks about this, uh, you know, how it applies to Winnie the Pooh, getting to that topic and how, uh, you know, Winnie the Pooh is always out there in nature with Christopher Robin and Piglet and Eeyore, Tigger, all his little friends in the hundred acre wood. <laughs> Remember that? And he's off there just, you know, exploring mother nature, the winds and the, the, the blustery day and all those cool things that make, um, you know, make life interesting. And his book, uh, jo Joseph uh, Parents, uh, A Walk in the Woods, it's meditations uh, on mindfulness with a bear named Pooh. Po <laughs> It's all about, yeah, slowing down and just being curious and, you know, just walking each step, one foot in front of the other and, and absorbing and, and appreciating all the things that we have in nature. And he takes us on a mindful journey. I mean, what's the bottom line? It's kindness. That's Pooh's whole thing <laughs> is uh, just be present and be kind. And I think if we could apply that, you know, to our everyday life, wouldn't that be great? And um, in the course of a day, um, this book takes it, it takes us with Pooh on his journey through life and his mindfulness uh, approach to the things he sees, the little people he in, engages with, and the, the relationship, um, the quality of the relationship that he actually applies to uh, to life. I just think it's amazing. And so I think that there's this magical connection to our childlike nature, to see things differently, to be curious and open-minded, to be kind and giving and appreciative. And to, you know, from that, take the confidence and the strength that we need to, to live happily and fully in this, in this time of our life. You know, being 60 is not, uh, not easy. Uh, we know this. We bring with us a lot of um, our past uh, habits and our past behaviors. And uh, I think it's useful to sometimes take a step back, practice some meditation or mindfulness, how, whatever you want to call it, and to just reconnect with those parts of ourselves that will help us to just to live a happier, fuller life. I hope that you found this useful. I actually would love to read this book, actually, and I think I'm going to um, to take a look at it because we're all looking to be fear, fearless and courageous and, um, gr and grateful for what we have. And this might be a great uh, guide for our walk in the woods, in our metaphorical woods. And of course, the most important thing that Pooh discovers is family, family and friends. You know, these are the people that are mean all the world to him and same with us. These are the people that we treasure. So I hope that you found that was a fun little journey with us here, a little mindfulness journey. And I'd love to ask you uh, in your own personal lives, you know, what are your values that are most important to you? What are the values that are most important to you in your life? And how do you think you can enhance them in the next month? What can you do to enhance those values that you really take uh, seriously in your life? love to read your comments. I want to thank you all for being here, for being just an incredibly engaged community. Uh, please check out our website, 60andme.com. And uh, I do look forward to seeing you all again soon and have a really wonderful day. 
Take good care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.